So we are, we are back uh, for another Alto sessions, but the, the, the team has congregated around this, uh, which is my latest acquisition. It's in the IBM uh, uh, 36050 control panel. And uh, Ed, you had a figured a way to use this one <laughs> to repair so how, how do you want to use this one to repair the Alto? <laughs> Lots of wires. <laughs> so he, Drivers. Yeah, he suggested that we hook uh, every light to uh, a register in the Alto and then we'll know what happens in it. But <laughs> we might use a logic analyzer instead. I, I like the idea though. <laughs> So we're now at the point where uh, the basic functional elements are uh, back to life, uh, power supply work, terminal works, uh, and the disk uh, spins and we think it works. Uh, and of course it uh, didn't boot last time, uh, so now it gets more difficult. We have to look in more detail uh, inside the uh, logic of the machine. Uh, so the first thing that we uh, need to figure out if, uh, of course, if there are some uh, clocks uh, signal working the processor, uh, it turns out that the whole machine is based out of the display. Uh, so the, the display refresh rate di dictates the clock, so the clock is on the uh, display control, uh, and there are a couple of them. Um, so is the uh, is the 29 megahertz clocks divided by five, I think, uh, and then there's a few conditional clocks and a few that are running all the time. So we first need to see if we have clock. Uh, believe we do because the the, the, the screen is uh, syncing on something, and it wouldn't if there weren't any clock signals. Uh, so hopefully that's fine. Uh, and then the next thing is very particular to the architecture of this machine. So when, when you look at it, um, no, they had to, in 1974, to make a machine that was vastly more intelligent um, uh, peripherals uh, than, than any small machine would have. So it had, uh, you know, it could print on uh, advanced printers, he had the ethernet, he had the, the disk, um, and of course it had the display, uh, which was a bitmap. And there's no microprocessor in the whole thing, so how, how would they do that? No, usually today you would put a display controller that's fairly intelligent and a disk controller that's fairly intelligent. They didn't have that, so instead they went for a very specific microcontrol machine architecture uh, where the uh, whole processor is microprogrammable and what it does is actually it runs uh, 16 tasks and most of them uh, the processor is in intimate control of the display it does all the display work and all the disk work uh, and when it does nothing it uh, emulates a standard microprocessor actually a standard mini computer uh, I think it emulates a Nova uh, so if you look at this. Sorry for the explanation, but it's, it's fairly hard to explain on, on the video. Uh, but uh, here you have uh, the micro program controller. It has its own uh, ROM and its own RAM. Uh, and uh, what it does, it has 16 micro program counters and it's just a switch. Uh, upon waking up the task are prioritized and of course uh, no, it even does uh, the memory refresh is a task and uh, the display is a task every line the disk every sector is a task that gets woken up and so on and so forth um, and uh, the, it jumps to whatever the current task is and when it has nothing to do it just to, jumps to the emulation task which actually runs the user program uh, so the first thing we would have to do here uh, to see if there is any life in the machine is uh, to check that it's jumping around micro tasks. Is 63? Yeah. Yeah, because that's the non locked yeah. one. It would yeah. be pretty weird if it, were if it was the other way around, right? The stop pulse and vents clocks. So, do, do you think I can disconnect these? Things with it powered up, or should be able to. Okay, we go wired on a few 
clocks. Stay it on. Okay. Okay, we got. Well, um, we have some signal. A very bright screen here. Yeah, yeah, it's it's getting better every time I turn it on. It's just <laughs> it's it's, good. it's amazingly bright back there. Oh, those are those are weird we clocks. One time trigger when it comes on. Doesn't look like it's running. Yeah. Uh, auto. So how do you reset? What happened? Do. No, it is it is running signal. It's, it's doing, it's, it's, uh, it's triggering on it. No? I don't think no, so. I, I'm on the run. Okay. No, this is what's happening. Okay, well, why is the reset going up and down like a yo yo? Uh, well, it's, uh, and our <laughs> clocks don't look good, huh? Okay, turning this on with clock better grounded and so we have clock we do have it uh, so what what you want to do can uh, try to reset um, maybe trigger so on the what, reset what you want to do is so is there that reset line is it ground is that what it is you can reset on four um hold on let me so then we want to see it, it at the right so that means it'll be high and it'll, we want to see it be high and it's, it's slow it's, it's slow right now and then I could do a you want to catch single it on the trailing edge okay mm -hmm. try it on and off in. do you want yeah. do you want the button push yes yeah. yeah oh beg your pardon in and out yeah. in and out there you go we got yeah. it thank you okay but we it just works. The trailing edge we didn't get that no that's that's when reset starts yes well that's but good. at least it's working oh okay so you want to we can and we know it's coming out there, there we go yep good okay you can do it uh, one more time go for it one, two. There you go. And, oh, this, and you have the gating that works, so that looks like good clocks to me. So all, all those clocks are good, right? So these are three more. You can see them being gated correctly. So now we are going to do our, our first test to see if there's some life in the processor. And uh, this is an interesting processor. In it's, it has 16 tasks that it switches around continuously. And here's a little task scheduler here as a four bits. And if we see that wiggling, probably the processor has some life in it, or so is the idea. So we hooked our four signals from the back plane to that task scheduler. And uh, Ed, you want to yep. go to your post and see if we can boot the machine. <laughs> it did it on its own. Ready? Uh, don't need to do anything, it's already running. Try it again. Trying. Okay. I pushed for one second. Yeah. I'm sure it's not frozen? Uh, uh, no, 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 it's, it's running here. That's weird. It started on its own. The single, and then uh, we actually do see that the bits are wiggling, so that is, uh, I guess, the nicest piece of news so far. It means the processor is running, right? We see the memory task running and the cursor task. Yeah, so, so and, and uh, Ken and Cal were able to decode which this task's number here are for the four bits and uh, it's running the right ones. So now that we have uh, all the four bits of the task number, uh, we can easily decode them and figure out what the processor is doing. So most of the time they are high, so that's the emulator task uh, trying to run the user program or actually the, the, the boot uh, starts there, the boot sequence started there. Uh, we also see the uh, disk sector task, that's when line 4 is down. Uh, we see the memory refresh at the right interval uh, So and, and, and the display. So it's running what we expect. So we, we seem to have nice... CPU activity there, but uh, our disk is spinning up and nothing is changing the pattern. So we have uh, no disk activity, so we wanted to see if at least the we got some sector pulses from the disk. Some 
launching it takes a while and right now it's flatlining nothing so um, the bottom trace is disk strobe right that's a command from the processor you should try to read it and the top trace is the sector information which should come out uh, as soon as the disk loads we have to wait one, two, three. Okay, and then it came to ready, and actually, we got some life here. We have our sector pulses right here. And there's 3.3 microsecond apart, as the doctor call ordered. And then, if you uh, try to start a machine, we see no activity. Okay, go, go for it. Push, release. So it's not requesting data. We're getting somewhat excited here. Also, we uh, hooked it up to the disk and there's no disk activity. We try to switch memory banks, which is a little switch. It's a debug switch right there. And it, it at one point, it um, gave us something on the screen, uh, garbage. So we have our first uh, action here where it's something that you appear on the screen while we switch memory banks so we just uh, did a, a memory bank switch and which will once again put some random data apparently in the display buffer uh, so the display task is uh, apparently working which is comforting so I didn't capture it in the video, but uh, Carl had us uh, check to make sure that uh, on the disk assembly uh, all the conditions were right, it was ready, it was sending the sector um, pulses, uh, but we never saw it selected, uh, ever. Uh, so Ken thinks, and uh, I agree with him, that uh, something is uh, wrong and during the boot sequence so next step will be to uh, actually use the uh, logic analyzer uh, which is on the ready here uh, so we can figure out what the uh, alto is actually doing uh, and why it doesn't boot but uh, it was actually a comforting session to see that there is some uh, processor activity i didn't expect that um, and that uh, we even had something on the screen uh, I didn't expect that either. Uh, so that's uh, uh, to be continued. Bye-bye.